Um, all right, here we go. Uh, we're going to have Brian Billick a little while. Simon and Yonkers, what's up, Simon? What's going on, Mike? What's happening? Uh, uh, nothing much. Uh, so I saw Jeter was at the Pats game last night, and winter meetings are going on, and he's just getting blasted across national media. And I think it kind of shows his true colors, and it really shows what people around here were afraid to say for 20 years, is that this guy's heart is into himself. He's not a team guy like people always thought he was because you see the first thing he does when he comes to Miami is take a sledgehammer to the franchise. And you could put it on Bruce Sherman. You could put it on Manfred for giving the team to guys that did not have any money and that they're using Jeter as the face of the franchise to take the hit for them. But he is supposed to go out there and be a leader. Do something that says, I'm going to lead this team to victory. He trades Jim Carlos Stanton. He's partying in a Pat suite, showing no remorse, throwing Stanton under the bus. And this is the kind of thing he did as a player with the Yankees. Um, first of all. Think, think about it, Mike. Think first about of all, I see, I'm going to be fair here to Jeter. I'm trying to be fair. Um, I'm being fair, too. I, 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 I think, I think, uh, now I think listen, I think he here... And I was one of the few people here who wasn't afraid to criticize him when he was here, okay? Which he alluded to the other day when he said you were always fair but tough. Uh, now, when we felt he wasn't making A-Rod comfortable here in the beginning when he came here, and he didn't like A-Rod being here, we said it. I mean, we said it. He tried to make A-Rod's life here tough when he, when he first came here. We all knew what he was doing. And it was no secret that Jeter was always uh, you know, a lot tougher behind the scenes than people let on, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not wrong. It was, it There's was, nothing it was wrong that he had an edge. There's nothing wrong that he had a little bit of an edge. There's nothing wrong with that. He but it was just the edge. It's he not just he the wanted edge. to win. He, wa he wanted to win. Now, as far as this team, whether or not he bought the team on a shoestring – or they bought it on a shoestring or not, I can't answer to that because I haven't seen the papers. So I, I, there are rumors to that, but I can't give you that that's verifiable because I just haven't seen the finances. That, that has been rumored, to be fair. It has been rumored okay. that they, they, they let them buy the team on a shoestring. Now, again, that, th that's baseball. Baseball didn't have to allow them to do that if they didn't have the money. Now, be that as it may, that's not Jeter's problem. He's not the money guy anyway. Now, as far as him trading Stanton, Stanton doesn't fit that team with what they were going to do there. We all knew they were going to break the franchise. Wait, 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 wait. You, and, you can't have a guy making all that money and them having that level payroll. It's not going to work. I mean, it's a, let's be honest. He had a trade. They offered him a deal. He was, had was, to trade. He, he had to trade him. I don't have a problem with him trading him. He had to trade him. It's just that he didn't get a good deal for him. Stanton boxed him into a corner. He clearly boxed him into a corner. He, you knew he was going to get rid of Stanton. That was, there was no issue about that. That's not the. That's not by itself the problem because well, they were well, never going to. They were it. never. Listen, they were never going to have a franchise that they could afford Stanton and build up a pitching staff. They were, That was never going to happen. There. It was. It was not going to happen. So well, you're paying himself five million a year to get his deposit on the team back. I mean, is that necessary? You can go any which way with this. And I'm not going any which way. Wait a second. Is he running out of town? Is he flipping a franchise that I don't know about? Is he flipping a franchise? But the way the Marlins operate, in five years he could be. Who knows? Well, wait a second. He's not flipping it at the moment, so he's going to be there. So you haven't even seen him put a product on the field yet. And you're telling me he's that he can't do the job. How do you know he can't do the job? He hasn't even had a chance to do the job yet. He could do the job, but this is the worst possible start. Trading the MVP. It's not a good start. I totally agree. Listen, he's going to take his lumps now. But you know what? You have a problem with him sitting at the what? Pat game. Where did you want him to be? I want him to be the face of the franchise. I want him so to what, the what does that mean? No what does that mean? Okay. I want him to be in front of the media. You want him to want lie him down, and I, you want him to lie down on I ninety five. What do you want him to do? I, I want him to take responsibility because he never took responsibility for a lot of things that happened when he should have been the leader. When his teammates were under fire for PEDs, whether it was Jason Giambi, that's not or, his place you know, to be. That's not his, wait, say that's not his place to answer. For, listen, I'm trying to be fair to you. That's not Jeter's place to answer for other people's uh, steroid use. Oh, come on now, I mean that's ridiculous. You want him to answer for other players' steroid use? That's not fair. And I'm trying to be fair to Jeter. Jeter wasn't always right. 
And Jeter, like I said, was a lot more about Jeter and a lot tougher than anybody. Ever. Now, he never took a bad step. He always did everything professionally, never took a bad step, was as calculated and as smart as anybody ever was. Uh, classy player, absolutely professional. But was he, you know, the sweetest guy in the world? Of course not. He, he could be tough in the clubhouse, you know that. And, you know, he, he had a little edge to him, which is nothing wrong with that. I have no problem with that. Could he have been nice to A-Rod when he first came in? Absolutely, he could have been. He didn't, you know, he would, but he didn't love it. So that's fine. We, we, Doug and I both called him out on that when it happened. But before you say here that you think Jeter's already showed you that he can't build the team, I mean, you got to give him a little more time than just one move. Now, you want to keep standing there, fine. It wasn't like you were winning last year. You're not going to win with that team with him making that money, and that's your payroll. It's not going to work. Worst thing that happened is, though, he got boxed in. He couldn't get him traded. Stanton boxed him in with the no trade. That no trade killed you. That no, those no trades kill you. Absolutely kill you. Because he could have traded them to the Cardinals. He could have traded them to the Giants. Nobody would have been that upset. They sent him up here for nothing, and now everybody's crazy. And if the owners bought the team on a string and put Jeter in as the front man, hey, you'd do the same thing if you were Jeter. You're getting a piece of a franchise for not a lot of money up front. It's not a bad deal. You could buy something with other people's money and wind up getting a piece of the franchise. That's not a bad deal at all. It's a pretty smart deal. A deal that any of us is going to take. So I try to be at least fair here. I understand, you know, I was never there to just heap praise on Gina, and I'm not going to be there just to kill him for the sake of killing him. I'm going to try and be realistic about it and be at least fairly, fairly objective about it. So I don't think it's the end of the earth yet. When Giancarlo, I just don't think I don't think it is. So we'll see what happens. Now, not a good looking trade, a hard one to sell your fan base. Absolutely. So he's taking his lumps there. That's all right. He'll take his lumps. That's all. He'll live. Uh, Roy in Somerset, New Jersey. What's up, Roy? Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, your views will be truly missed. Thank you. What's happening? I just want to talk to you about the Giants. Yeah, I think it was uh, very vindictive what McAdoo did to Eli. I mean, he knew coming on there, his offense would not fit Eli's um, you no know, skill set. And so what I want to ask you, as far as going forward with coaches, is it fair to say that the, the Maris, they don't, do, they don't do that good of a job of, of picking a coach? Um, I mean, I would say, I, would, I think it's fair to say that they had at least three Hall of Fame coaches on their staff at one time or another that they missed on. Well, they did? Who were they? Uh, Landry, Lombardi, and Oh, Belichick, no, 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 wait right? a second, wait a second. You're going back now 60 years. I mean... I know, uh, I'm just saying. Well, that, there, right? listen, that's, that, that's too long ago. I can't get... That's, that's I can't go back to Lombardi. I mean, that's 19... You're going back 60 years. I mean, that's just too far. Yeah, I mean, yes, they missed on... And you can't tell me about Belichick, because Belichick got fired from his first job. So, I mean, and they were never hiring Belichick as the coach. They just weren't. George Young didn't like him. John in Jersey, what's up, John? And George hey, Young did Mike, a great job with the franchise, but he didn't like uh, Belichick. What's up? Mike, happy holidays. Uh, before I ask my question, I also want to give a shout-out to Mons and the rest of the guys that answered the phone for you. They're doing a good job. Uh, don't worry about them. They don't need any publicity. Let's okay. go. What's up? <laughs> um, the question I have, with Carson Wentz for the Eagles going down and Foles stepping in, yeah. do you see a, a similar scenario playing out like when Sims went down and Hostetler came in? Odd, odds are no, because Hostetler did a great job. They changed the fa they changed the team, and that team had a lot more versatility to it. And it's amazing they didn't miss somebody as good as Phil Sims, but they didn't. Hostetler did a great job. Now it was a different team. You know, they ran the ball a lot, and they used Hostetler's med, 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 uh, mobility a lot. But they really ran the ball with a lot of power. They played a lot of uh, three tight ends. They did a lot of jumbo stuff. They uh, they did a great job with the offensive line. John Elliott did a great job. Otis did a great job running with power. Uh, so And Hostetler really did play well. you got to give him credit. Nobody loved Hostetler, but he really did a good job during those weeks. Chris in Hicksville, what's up, Chris? Hey, Mike, I'm actually going to be at the Paley Center. I won tickets to that. I'm bringing Good. my brother. Really, we're really looking forward to Good. it. Um, Gardner, uh, if the Yank, I mean, I, I uh, part of this is emotional because I've been a fan of his since 
Uh, he was a prospect, and he's been on the team. You, you forget how long he's been on the team. Long time, long time. He's an important piece, and Very. especially if you go young, and I don't have a problem with it at second and third, but even if you're the biggest believer in Hicks, and I know you're not. I mean, I'm kind of like you. I got to see. I got to see a it it again, and b for him to stay healthy. Trading that's you know to trade Gardner. Um, that that's that's tough to do. And you mentioned before about having that flexibility uh, with left field. I, I that is not a road. I well, think I mean, listen, I've, they they could go down it. Um, they have some young players. They have Hicks. They have Frazier. Uh, the key is going to be whether or not they can unload that $21 million uh, uh, contract for, for Ellsbury. That's the key. And if they can, how much can they get picked up? That's a big key. It's $21.1 million. That's very important. If not, they need to unload contracts. They got the Headley contract out today. That's key. Uh, the Gardner contract of $11 million would help them. Would they miss Gardner? Absolutely. Gardner's a gamer. They'd absolutely miss him. He's been a very solid player for the Yankees. Always liked him. 420 is the Mink Man.